I published a video a little while ago called Scored Piston and Cylinder. That was a video that showed you how to check your engine, check your your piston, your cylinder to make sure that it was in good shape before you all went wasting your money buying new carburetors and getting tune-ups done on it where it's not going to run anyways. If you guys missed that video, got a little link up here for you in the I button, back on my channel called Scored Piston and Cylinder. So I got a lot of comments on that on that uh, video. Guys saying, hey, the, okay, good video, but why did my piston and cylinder score? Why is my engine destroyed? Fair enough, guys. I'm going to take you through that right now. We're going to go through how to analyze and diagnose your piston to see why that might have happened. I'm going to be real honest with you guys. This is going to be a little dry and boring for some of you guys. If you don't actually want to know this information, my advice to you, Go to the fridge right now, grab whatever beer you got in there, and kick back. <laughs> Kokanee, welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon, guys. I got this awesome little cheat sheet from Echo. It's a failure analysis report with some good uh, photographs on here. A uh, engine failure causes of why your piston cylinder, your engine might be destroyed on your unit. We're going to go through that right now. Um, first of all, this is diagnosing and analyzing your piston. So you need to take the cylinder off of your unit so you can clearly see the piston, you need to see all the way around that piston to be able to do this. If you've already taken your piston off of your unit like that and it's in your hand, we're going to be talking about the intake and the exhaust side. Sometimes if you already have your piston off, you forgot which is which. I'm going to show you right here. If you scrape some of this carbon off the top of your, off your piston, 99.9% .9 of pistons have a little arrow stamped in the top of it, and that arrow always points to your exhaust side, your muffler. Another way of telling which way is which uh, your intake and your exhaust is these little locator pins right here. Right where the ring is split, there's a little pin in that groove and a little pin in that groove. That, those pins are always on your intake side, your carburetor side. So that's how you're going to tell if you already have that in your hand and you forgot. Now you know which one's the intake, which one's the exhaust. Now we can carry on. What I'm going to do here is uh, this Echo cheat sheet right here. It has six common reasons that your piston may be scored and how to figure out why it's scored. I'm going to take you through the first four that are not that common. We'll go through those real quick burn through those and then I'm going to leave the, the last two the most common ones to last so maybe we can spend a little bit more time on that. First thing we're going through right here <clears throat> is this one. It says uncertified two-stroke oil. There are a lot of guys out there still that use motor oil 10W30 and mix in their fuel to use in their two-stroke two-cycle engines. This is what this is about right here. Or just really crappy, cheap, go buy the cheapest two-stroke mix oil that you can buy. This is why you don't want to do it. Dark deposits all around the piston. You can see by those two photographs what, right there what it looks like. Sometimes the piston rings are stuck inside the groove because of that crappy mix oil. It's gluing them in there and uh, then you have no compression anymore because the, the rings aren't free and they're not springing out again, making contact with the cylinder wall. Has excess carbon in there, it can plug your exhaust port up in your spark arrestor screen. Crankcase usually stays clean. Now this is such an uncommon problem, I believe, I hardly ever see this. I don't actually have a good example of a piston here to show you guys, but if you just look at those two photographs right there, Maybe that is your problem. The key point is here, use high quality mix oil. You're not saving any money by going out and buying the cheapest stuff there is 
or by just taking 10 W30 motor oil and mixing it in there. You're not saving any money in the long run. Next one we're gonna go to is the stale fuel one. This is caused by, right there, caused by running engine on old fuel. We all know what this stinky gas smells like. Sometimes your engine will actually continue to run on that. But if you do, you're going to get heavy varnish deposits all around the piston. Sometimes that varnish gets glued into your piston grooves where it'll stick your piston rings in also. And uh, even down your crankcase, if you see this photo right here, you get all that crusty stuff down in your crankcase like that where it should be nice and clean like this. And then if your rings are stuck in the groove, uh, because of the varnish that are gluing them in there, it can cause the exhaust side of the piston to start scoring. The closest example I could come up with right here is this one's pretty close. You can see how it's kind of got some of the same coloration as that, uh, as that photograph right there. Same coloration right here. That could possibly be from some stale fuel that has been running through this. So again, the key point there is to always, in your two-stroke, your two-cycle engines, it's very important. You always have nice, fresh fuel in it, and it's mixed properly. Moving on to the next one, dirt ingestion. Look for signs of dirt ingested through air filter housing. There's a lot of people that their engine doesn't run properly, and then they realize if they take their air filter out altogether because it's plugged, then it runs way better. Yeah, if your air filter's plugged, it's going to run way better if you take it out. Clean it. Don't leave it out. What's going to happen with your piston, and we're looking at the intake side of the piston right here. You see that photograph? High piston and cylinder wear, especially on the intake side. Yeah, because it's sandblasting the entire intake side of your, of your piston which is gonna sorta of look like this. This is the closest example I could come up with for you guys. This is the intake side. You can see these marks right here. That absolutely could be from wood chips getting in there and, or sand or little pebbles and whatnot getting sucked in there. And then you look at the exhaust side and the exhaust side is completely perfect the intake side is getting sandblasted down and that will start wearing the intake side of your piston down and can stick your ring in wear the skirt of your piston off the skirt is right here it'll wear it down so thin that your engine isn't going to run anymore sometimes you will actually have on top of the piston will be this tan kind of kind of this um um kind of a tannish gray kind of color on top of it. It's literally burnt dirt on top of your piston. It flakes off really easy. Another way of telling that if you have dirt ingestion problem there is that uh, if you look down in the crankcase, you got your piston and your cylinder off. If you look down inside the crankcase like that and it's full of dirt down there, well, there's no other way for dirt to get in there unless you had a problem with your air filter that maybe maybe pieces of the air filter are actually pulling off and uh, getting sucked into your engine too. Or you had your air filter off altogether and it's just sucking just dust and dirt and wood chips into there and it's getting down into your crankcase. I do have another video on air filter care. Uh, go back to my channel. It's called, I'll put another link up there for you. It's called uh, air filter cleaning. Next one we'll go to is this overheating issue. This is fairly common. I have a great example for you guys on this. If you see these two photographs, this shows your intake side of your piston right there. Heat discoloration, exhaust side right there is scored. Can be caused by blocked engine cooling air intake. That's your fins. You know, the fins on the side of your cylinder right there, sometimes they get plugged up so bad that can cause your engine to overheat. Make sure that those cooling fins are always clear. Other causes include heavy engine load. What that means is 
Cutting with a dull chain, a super dull chain, you got way more load on your engine, it's gonna get hotter. A weed eater, a, a line trimmer, a strimmer, whatever you guys wanna call it, run, some people will take the guard right off of there with the line cutter on it and they'll run their lines on their, on their trimmer that long. Excessive engine load right there. It heats your engine up and can cause this. Restricted exhaust will contribute to that. If you have a plugged exhaust port or a plugged muffler screen, your spark arrestor screen, can't breathe properly, it's gonna make your engine hotter. Heat expands piston past limits, scoring the piston. This is a great point right here because the overheating issue, here's the piston right here that has been overheated. Look at this, it's almost identical to what these photographs show. There's your intake side, it's got a little mark right there, but you can't feel anything. You flip it over to the exhaust side, it's completely scored on that side. It's actually got the piston rings are actually stuck right in there. This could be uh, an overheating issue, like, and from the causes that I just showed you. This can also be what is uh, known uh, in the industry as being a cold seizure. That's not actually on this sheet, but what a cold seizure is, um, is construction guys are famous for this. You know construction guys, they're framing a house, they're all time is money, go, go, go. They have a little chainsaw sitting there for emergency. They need to cut something out. They fire that chainsaw up and they pin the throttle down and start cutting something out without even warming the thing up for two seconds. What happens then is that your piston, as it's warming up, it expands. If you don't let your chainsaw warm up for at least you know, 30 seconds, something like that, to actually have that piston expand evenly, you just pin it like they do, the exhaust side of the piston expands faster. So it actually turns into an oval where the exhaust side of that piston ex expands faster and it actually starts making contact with the exhaust side of the cylinder and it actually literally starts rubbing on the exhaust side of the cylinder and that is what's called a cold seizure. And, and that piston is gonna look exactly the same as that with a cold seizure. Bottom line to that one is, warm your chainsaw up before you start cutting something for at least, you know, 30 seconds. Just sit there and rev it up and let that, let that piston expand evenly before you start cutting something. Okay, so now this next one right here is probably the most common that you're ever gonna see is running your two-stroke, your two-cycle engine on raw gas. That means straight gas, no mix oil in it. You accidentally put in the same gas that uh, you put in your uh, lawnmower or your car or your truck. There is no lubrication in it whatsoever. It causes that piston to do this right here. This is a perfect example. If you see this, Here's your intake side. Your intake is completely scored. Here's your exhaust side, completely scored. I can guarantee you that that piston right there was ran with raw, straight fuel, no mix oil in that. It says score often wraps around the entire piston, even to the intake side, just like this one. Dry piston. This is important too, if you actually have a piston that looks like that and you think, well, well, was it really straight gas? The inside of the skirt will be dry. There will be no oily residue inside that skirt like this, completely dry and dusty. Guaranteed, that one had straight fuel ran through it. Last one we're gonna take you through now is this one right here called lean seizure. This one's actually fairly common too. If you look at these photographs, Intake side looks good. Spot score exhaust side. The whole side of that piston on the exhaust side, just a little strip that's gonna go down there. It says right there, caused by over lean carb adjustment, fuel restriction, or air leak. What that means is that it can be, um, especially on a chainsaw, if you, if you adjust your high speed screw on your chainsaw, too far in so it's running so fast that it's not getting enough fuel, 
and it's uh, not getting enough lubrication on there. That's what that could look like. Fuel restriction or air leak could be a plugged fuel filter, which is also restricting the amount of fuel getting in there because we all know the fuel is what has the lubrication in it. So again, it's not a it, plugged fuel filter. It's not getting enough lubrication. It'll cause it to run lean also. Too much air, not enough fuel. The other one, there is the air leak. That's a big one right there. Now that can be caused by your cylinder gasket leaking. It can be caused by your intake gasket leaking or your crankshaft seals are leaking and sucking air into there. Again, you're getting too much air, not enough fuel. And that's what's going to happen. So I'll show you what I found with this backpack blower that I, that I took apart. It's exactly the same as those photographs that I just showed you right there on, the, on this cheat sheet. You see that spot score on the exhaust side? It's scored right up there just like the photograph shows. And the intake side right there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. The piston looks like a lean seizure, and sure enough, when I took the carburetor off, on the other side, in between the carburetor and the, and the cylinder, look at that. That gasket right there is wet. It's wet on both sides. That is clearly should not be wet. That is absolutely obvious to me that that has been sucking air through that gasket and it was not sealing properly. That's what happened right there. I guarantee you it was sucking air through that gasket because of what the gasket looked like. And also the piston matches this failure analysis report from Echo absolutely perfectly. So I hope that helped some of you guys out there if you really wanted to know why your engine failed. I hope that those visual aids there were a big benefit for you too, so you can actually clearly see that, wrap your head around that a little bit more. Um, I know I probably missed something. This was general. If I did miss something, uh, other you other small engine mechanics out there, please chime in on the comments on this video and uh, let me know what I missed. Maybe you got some stuff to add to it. That'd be great. I love it when you guys do that. This is all for educational purposes. And... Um, I hope you liked the video, guys. Give me that thumbs up button again. Subscribe to my channel and uh, share that with your friends if you like. And that's it. I'm going to go finish the rest of my kokanee beer now. Steve out.